Hello and welcome to Y'all Monitor Brief. It's May 10th. I'm Kristen Tolman. Today is a short episode featuring a clip from All Monitor's chief correspondent, Amberin Zaman, on her podcast on the Middle East. The entire dialogue can be found on All Monitor's website, and it's a good weekend listen if you're looking for one. Now, on to the headlines. Lebanon's Iran-backed Hezbollah group said it fired rockets at Israel on Friday in retaliation for strikes, which state media said killed two people in the south of the country. Israel's presence in the Eurovision Song Contest triggered fierce debate Friday amid protests in the host city, while the Dutch contestant was mysteriously pulled from the rehearsals on the eve of the final. The United Nations General Assembly voted overwhelmingly on Friday to grant the Palestinians some additional rights in the global body after their drive for full membership was blocked by the United States on the UN Security Council. Israel's closure of key crossings in Gaza have cut off the main entry for aid and particularly fuel, rendering humanitarian operations all but impossible, a senior UN official warned Thursday. Hamas also called for an end to airdrops of aid after two Palestinians were killed in northern Gaza when an aid pellet crushed into a warehouse after its parachute failed to open. A U.S. container ship loaded with aid for Gaza left Cyprus Thursday in a new test up a maritime corridor to get relief into the besieged Palestinian territory. Now, on to Amber and Zaman's On the Middle East podcast clip. Is it really a new era? What's going on between Turkey and Greece? Is it really love now after years of exchanging threats and fears among Turkey's NATO allies of conflict between these two neighbors? Well, if we look into the content of the relations, I don't think that we can expect a breakthrough. Although it is important to note that the skirmishes that used to dominate uh, the bilateral relationships are no longer there. So the dogfights in the Aegean have uh, uh, been reduced to a very, very low level. Uh, there are no acrimonies, there are no harsh exchanges between the two sides that used to dominate with Turkish relations uh, until last year. So this is something important to note. Uh, what uh, the Turkish president may mean, I think, uh, as a new era, may refer to building a, a, a new personal uh, relationship between the two leaders. I think that was something important. That was something missing uh, during the first term of the Mitsotakis administration since uh, Misotakis uh, came to power replacing Alexis Tsipras. Apparently, there was a better relationship between Tsipras and Erdogan. And when Misotakis came uh, to power, uh, there was no good rapport between the two sides. And I think this contributed to the deterioration of the relationship between the two countries. Uh, there, there was a sharp decline uh, in the relationship between Greece and Turkey. Uh, and uh, I think that this was also due to the fact that uh, there was a breach in uh, confidence or communication between the two sides. The most important uh, ex- issue to expect, the most important improvement to expect from that visit is to consolidate this improvement in the communication between the two leaders, but also between the two ministries and uh, the civil societies and the business circles of the two uh, countries, which I think is very important, even though the two sides may agree that they cannot resolve the difficult issues that have been outstanding for decades anyway. So uh, we can uh, try to achieve smaller uh, results and hope that achieving the smaller results will eventually prepare a ground to address the real big issues that have been uh, waiting for so long. So we need to remind our audience, obviously, what those big issues are. And also, I mean, beyond what you described as a sort of lack of chemistry between these leaders that you say existed between uh, Tsiprias, who led Syriza, the main opposition party, right? Um, Beyond that, though, obviously, we're talking about a broader context of what's going on in the in the region, etc., the Eastern Mediterranean. I mean, can you just run us through the main problems? What is it that caused so much friction that people were concerned about conflict between Greece and Turkey? That's it for today. 
If you want to read all these stories and more impacting the region and listen to the rest of Amberin's podcast, you can at allmonitor.com.